All right, let's talk about Kenny Pickett, who, there's no getting around it, he had a rough day. And, you know, uh, you see the box score stats, uh, you might say, like, okay, well, you know, that can sometimes be misleading, going up against a good defense. Was he really, like, bad in this one? Yeah, and I'm a, I'm typically a pretty big Kenny Pickett defender. I typically, uh, you know, have been pretty in, in favor of him, and I really liked his rookie season. This was a rough, rough day. It, it just was. And let's talk about what went wrong. So we're going to start off with this play. It's third down and five, and, you know, this one I don't think was actually that bad. This one I'm not really putting that much on Kenny Pickett. Also, sorry if you can hear some like banging going on in the background. I never know if my microphone can pick it up or not because it's usually pretty good at avoiding background noise. But there's just, you know, perpetual construction going on uh, in my apartment as my apartment complex decided they're going to renovate all the apartments around me, uh, which has been not fun. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, sticking with Kenny Pickett, let's just talk about uh, what's going on. So first, we're going to start off with this one. You see Pickett takes the snap, and I think some people felt like this was just a missed throw, an underthrow. I actually don't believe that's the case. I think that he was expecting his receiver to stop here, and his receiver did not, which is still in to some degree on Pickett. And, like, I do think, you know, people have brought this up, and I think it's fair to say, like, well, I've kind of said, man, Kenny Pickett seems to throw a lot of bad luck interceptions, uh, which is true. At a certain point, you have to wonder, like, is it part of it that he's the one, you know, he, the one constant is it's him throwing them? And is there still a play style reason why he's throwing these bad luck interceptions? You know, my podcast co-host Kyle speculated he's always throwing into coverage uh, and always throwing into tight windows, which results in some bad luck interceptions. I kind of brought up, well, the Steelers have some talented receivers, but they're not really like big separation receivers. There's no Tyreek Hill, you know, getting five yards open. It's kind of what the Steelers do is, you know, not get separation. And also on this one, you see that, I mean, you know, the receiver falls down. What are you going to do? Like, that, I don't think that that would have been an interception uh, if, you know, everyone stayed on their feet there. It might have it probably still wasn't going to be a completion, though. So I'm not going to hold that one against Pickett too much. Uh, there's plenty of plays I thought you could criticize Pickett for. I don't think this is one of them. And, like, something like this, I mean, they were just, I don't know, things were tough. And I'm, I'm blaming Pickett for a lot of this. It wasn't just Pickett, of course. The way this play is designed to work, though, really simple play. Second down and 15. Let's just get some yards. Make it a possible third down right here. Uh, you know, have a little route underneath coverage. All right, let's see how it works. Pickett is going to take the snap right here. And you see that at this point, there's, yeah, there's a little window to make this throw, gain some yards. And who knows? Maybe your know, receiver can make a linebacker miss and pick up more yards. Now, that linebacker is Fred Warner, who I'm not going to bank on missing too much. But, you know, there's an opportunity there. Obviously, the other aspect of this play is that there's pressure coming. Pickett is about to get hit. And that's going to affect the play. I mean, look, Pickett, you know, gets hit and throws it directly to Fred Warner, who somehow drops that football. That should have been an interception. So Pickett actually got away with one. If you want to say the first one was, uh, you know, bad luck, this one is good luck for Pickett. Although, again, you could argue how much of that was his fault because he was getting hit and that disrupted the play. You could, you know, absolve him of the blame if you wanted to. At the same time, though, there are going to be plays when you have to throw off balance. You can't throw it directly to the other team. There are going to be plays when your hit is your thrown. Uh, you got to still find a way to uh, at least, you know, not throw it directly to an, an, op an opposing player there. And also, there were just some missed throws. I mean, there just were. Like, he missed some throws, uh, which is, again, uncharacteristic. I'm not making this video to say Kenny Pickett sucks. You know, again, week one overreactions are a very real thing. People will say, well, I guess Kenny Pickett can't play football, huh? Obviously, I don't think that's the case. You know, having a bad day is just that. It's having a bad day. The overall sample size of him in the NFL still says that he's at least a solid player. Uh, this was just a, a bad day. But yeah, anyway, it's third down and six. You have a tight end who's going to just try and get into a gap in coverage. Simple enough. Very simple play, but an important one as you're down 20 points trying to get back into this. Pickett takes the snap. He is going to look in that direction and it's open. I mean, this is this is just an open receiver. That's the simplest way you can put it. This is a throw that you have to make if you're Kenny Pickett. But Pickett's throw is just off to the point where a tight end uh, weirdly kind of went to grab that ball and you know, twisted his uh, leg, it looked like, which is not good. Um, maybe he could have made a better route to the ball, and maybe Pickett was expecting him to move in a little bit. Uh, you know, Pickett was in the throwing motion as, you know, his player was stopped, so maybe there was something there. But again, this is just one example. There were other missed throws. This one, another important one, where it ended up not mattering. They scored a touchdown on this play anyway, or not on this play, but on this drive anyway after a penalty extended it. But uh, for now, again, down 20 points, really kind of need a touchdown right here. 
Also, correction, uh, they went for it on fourth down after failing here, and that's what got them the uh, touchdown. But uh, anyway, uh, what's going to happen is, is, again, simple play. Receiver running over the middle in a gap in coverage. Okay, simple enough, not a high degree of difficulty play whatsoever from Pickett's perspective. Watch as Pickett takes the snap. He's going to look over here, and you got a got a window. I mean, this is, quite frankly, a bit wide open, as Fred Warner, the linebacker, has completely moved up towards the top of the screen. Not in a bad way, just that's what the scheme brought him to do. I mean, there's several players who are open for Pittsburgh. This is a completion you have to make, and you know, including the guy who Pickett's throwing to is open. And this throw, that's just a misfire. I mean, that's behind and low to the point where Johnson wasn't able to make the catch. If Pickett hits him in stride, that's a touchdown. And again, they got the touchdown anyway. It worked out, but you know, this was an important play in the game at the time, and they didn't know it was going to work out. And you know, if it didn't work out, uh, we, we would be looking back at this saying, like, yeah, that was a real, real blow. So for Pickett, it, it was just a, it was a misfire. Again, one more, which like, you know, some of these might just be communication things. It's, it's totally possible. That last play wasn't. That last play was a missed throw. But like something like this, uh, and I guess that last play could have been a communication thing too. I don't think it was. But, uh, you know, this one, another one where it's like, maybe it was a communication thing. It's once again, one of those just underneath type routes. This is on a third down and four. So again, bringing up multiple third downs here as obviously third downs are the most important down for a quarterback. Watch as Pickett's going to take the snap right here. You see that there's, you know, a receiver, but he's already slowing up. Like, I wouldn't expect him to, uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it's just a weird situation because Pickett just throws it behind him and it falls incomplete. I, I guess Pickett was expecting him to just completely stop and he moved forward a little bit. I, I'm assuming that's what happened there. But again, uh, just not on the same page or missed throw. I don't know exactly which one it was, but at the end of the day, if you're having a bunch of, you know, miscommunications, that's also an issue. I don't know if that's as much on picket at that point, but it's still something that Pittsburgh is going to have to figure out. So yeah, what's kind of my verdict on Kenny Pickett? How do I view first, you know, how do I view him as a player? I, I'm definitely in the camp of I'm in, if I feel a certain way about someone, I'm not going to completely change that way about that player after week one. So as a whole, my thought of him as a rookie was I thought he was a solid rookie quarterback, and I'm excited to see what he does you know, here, and can he take that next step forward. He did not take the next step forward. You look at his box score stat line in this one. I, I alluded to it, but just to you know say it, this is, I mean, it's brutal. It's a brutal stat line. I mean, the 232 yards on 46 attempts, he was just barely over, uh, you know, what the uh, the Blaine Gabbert zone, right? Just barely got above that. Uh, in fact, Najee Harris had more yards per carry than Kenny Pickett had yards per pass. That's not good. You can't have that happen. On top of it, he was turning the ball over. So like, you know, the defense kind of got gashed early on and in it is San Francisco. Obviously, that all goes without saying. It's a tough team to play against. Uh, no one's going to deny that. But even a tough team to play against, if you're going to be a playoff team, which, you know, I feel like that was the expectations for Pittsburgh entering this year. Certainly, you know, I thought they could be a, like a, a playoff caliber team. And a lot of people uh, picked them to make the playoffs. I'm sure they picked themselves to make the playoffs. Uh, you expect to at least be able to hold your own against a, a tough team team, you know, Kenny Pickett's 68.4 passer rating, which I felt was earned. Sometimes the passer rating's terrible, but like, oh, it was bad luck and stuff. I thought he earned that passer rating in this game. Uh, when you're in that situation, like, you're just not going to really be able to even be competitive and be in position where you can try to steal a game like this. See, even if you want to say San Francisco is just a better team, which, okay, they probably are, you still have to play at your best. You still have to play at the kind of football you're able to play at and pick it just uh, did not in this one. But, you know, we'll see what he does in the future. I'm not going to overreact to one bad game, but I did think it was a bad game. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. What were your thoughts on Pickett's performance and the Steelers' performance as a whole? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.